everybody started his games. It's a, a outstanding uh, player, and uh, uh, this uh, dynamic style of how he played, of course, it's close to uh, our time when, uh, in a way, he was the first player who started playing the same style. Yeah, I, I think I repeated it a couple of times before when I was asked uh, who my favorite world champion is. And yeah, Alekhin is my favorite uh, world champion because of uh, something he brought into the game. Uh, the dynamic feel. I think before him, uh, the modern chess didn't really exist. Of course, I looked at uh, a lot, quite a lot of games of the past, and I have to say that Tarekhin was a very impressive player uh, with a constant fight for initiative. And of course, I mean, I wouldn't say that uh, I'm playing the same way as uh, him, but let's say that we have some similitudes in, in uh, the style of play. And, of course, it's completely different today, with because you're supported by a much more accurate opening preparation. But still, you know, we have this play for initiative and you know push uh, even at the cost of a few pawns. Yeah, what are these pawns? Uh, some little soldiers you can get rid of. <laughs> he invented this uh, Alekhin defense, as well as uh, when. Ernest Grunfeld played his first game in Grunfeld uh, in this opening. Not long after that, Alekhin was, I think, the second maestro who took that opening. So, so he had the feel, he had the feel for dynamics in the game, and chess wouldn't be the same, and we wouldn't play uh, as active and as entertaining as we do now without his contribution. I think his contribution is essentially in uh, uh, dynamics. Uh, he showed that chess had uh, a lot of hidden resources. And his games were very, very beautiful and uh, enjoyable to study as a result. I would say that I'm familiar with most of his games. Um, I mean, I might not have seen every last one, but uh, at least <coughs> his classics from San Remo and all, many of them made a very, very deep impression on me. I mean, he mentioned that he was the second one to pick up the Grunfeld. I would say he also managed to do a Zugzwang on uh, Nimzovich once. So, I mean, he was very adept at taking other, other people's ideas and then quickly learning them. Everybody had learned on his games and uh, in everybody's games you can see part of it. But of course it's new times. So, of course, but of course this big imagination, uh, 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 creativity from the first moves. Uh, uh, he was always striving uh, to have uh, put his piece in the most attacking, the most dynamic positions. And it's all necessary for everybody nowadays if uh, one wants to succeed. Yeah, I mean, some, some of his games I, I remember very well. Uh, yeah, I mean, I remember more being I guess being very impressed with him beating Capablanca and uh, you know this match is quite interesting when you look at it you know a very long match and uh, you know just uh, I guess in a way how tough he was in this match you know because to beat a guy like Capablanca until someone does it I think people don't really see it as a see it as a possibility almost you know that when you have these really great guys who are sweeping all before before them that uh, you know they don't show much weakness and you have to be really tough guy to be able to uh, to hang in there and a lot of games you know in the match he was uh, in difficulties and just uh, hanging on but uh, yeah of course you know really really great player I don't know if Capablanca meant it exactly like that it's possible where uh, I mean he was misquoted or something but he did seem to think that Chess said essentially the main bits had been worked out uh, so in a way I like showed him in the match that this was not the case um, and show that there was in fact a lot of life uh, left in chess. I think Ablanca, even if he didn't think so uh, explicitly, there was a tendency for him to think that uh, uh, chess was quite easy. But um, I think that's the second great contribution uh, of Alekin, that um, he took on Capablanca 
and uh, actually in the match he beat him both in uh, technical positions and in uh, complicated ones. I, I was reading some book, uh, Dutch book about uh, his match against Ove, so it was from a uh, Dutch uh, perspective, So, but it was very interesting. I remember this book, it was some story, like a bit like Kasparov, yeah, games, games and story. And uh, okay, it was really, uh, really interesting book. Even if he lost one match to Ove, but uh, of course he was a brilliant player, brilliant attacking player, and um, just yeah, I learned a lot from his games. Yeah. I think uh, as a you know as a Russian child studying chess, I think you're supposed to to, to start learning a lesson at some point. And uh, uh, one of my uh, earliest chess memories is uh, uh, my mom used to uh, set me basically uh, she doesn't play chess at all but she can read and we had this uh, this books of uh, uh, this book of Arekin's, uh, uh favorite games uh, annotated by him and uh, she would make me guess the moves basically and she couldn't really sustain the dialogue but she could see if I was guessing correctly what move he made in a certain position. Uh, I mean, I think we went through the entire book one summer. Well, uh, of course, at some point, you know, y y with the number of world champions there is, uh, uh, you, y you get similitudes in st style of some, you know. Y but uh, I would say that he has, you know, this constant fight for initiative. I mean, this is clearly something that you can attribute to him and Kasparov, yeah, and Fischer as well. So, I mean, I would put these three in the same category. As for his, his place in the Pantheon, so to speak, I think uh, he will, you know, he revolutionized the game at some point. I mean, he was one of the, one of the trailblazers and one of the uh, people who started the transformation of chess into what it is today. I think he was way ahead, way ahead of his time and uh, uh, definitely in, in the top, let's say, three of any, any list you, you care to make.